today the 22nd day of june 2021 the fight against corruption under francis ben kaifala don't they wrap up to three years now waiting at the things the way you don't achieve waiting at the big gains the way you don't make waiting a one for see the fight against corruption look like in the coming years all he began to sit down with Joseph of SLBC. He talk Boko. And I think say it's just right. Make we self listen. Even though we don't stream them live, but maybe some people are there now. Nobody don't listen. So if we just can't say let's discuss, maybe you'll be left out. You got the things say waiting and the talk but because you not been there for listen to waiting if we don't talk. So let's we'll just go right into it right now and make we listen back for the one them way not be get the opportunity for able for watch them where it be there live. Make we just go back and make we all see waiting it be look like and waiting is see. Like I said, Bokutin and the way they talk about they talk about the African Express. Eh? If you're able to relax, fend your pen and paper with an open mind, let we listen from the side of the commissioner. Because there are certain things in the way you say, not to the commission, the changer, eh? and a parliament. So some of the things in the way people and they blame the commission for. And they say no, not to you. Now parliament will make that changes. Then now parliament we suppose for talk to, not to the commission we suppose for blame. But hey, maybe it's just an excuse. You know, say the man a lawyer. So outside the weak points, can then add in the grip. But like I said, with an open mind, please, when I make we listen, because now so, the conversation bingo like. <laughs> Welcome back to Bottom Line. Now, Commissioner, let's remind ourselves about the brief ceremony at State House uh, three years ago when you were uh, appointed Commissioner and then when you had to subscribe to the oath uh, before His Excellency the President. Just take a watch. Against corruption is a serious move. Our country has suffered since independence to date. Our rankings in various international indices are not favorable when it comes to the areas that matter most. Corruption is one of the most embarrassing one of them. Today I have been given this opportunity to see how best I can join the conscientious effort of this government and the people of Sierra Leone to change that story. Looking at uh, that clip there, you know, some more or less like a young um, student leader, if you like. <laughs> so you see how times have actually changed. Three years old, I have um, commissioner, even the statue and all of this. But then, um, the most serious note, um, being appointed um, commissioner three years ago, today, I mean, what thoughts and emotions come to mind? I mean, when you think about the announcement, on that fateful day uh, in June, three years ago, that you have been appointed the country's commissioner. Yes, I mean, it, it was quite a journey getting there. I remember I, I had just completed uh, my second master's degree in the US and I was called upon to come back and lead the fight against corruption. I got here. A lot happened behind the scenes before my eventual appointment. But actually, the actual appointment was a great moment. I remember when it was finally announced by your good self on SLBC and then the social media erupted and many people welcomed the appointment, young people particularly, 
we are really, really, really ecstatic about it. And I, I felt like uh, they were putting the, on my shoulders a lot of pressures because of how they felt about corruption and how they wanted somebody to come and really take on the fight to launder the image of the country. So it was a great moment. It's a great moment. Even thinking about it now makes me uh, feel that, that atmosphere. Also, your, your initial, if you like, visions, um, I mean, from that moment, probably the first year, um, probably in the next two years that has given me, have you met them at all? You have the video. You saw the video. And that is why when people are criticizing and sometimes many people, I tell them, go back to what I said well, before I was appointed. My vision was very clear. It was to launder the image of the country and to position the country favorably in all global indexes. I said it clearly at State House. It was the only promise I made. And how I was going to engineer getting there was now left to what I did once I got to the ACC, working with the government, working with the people of Sierra Leone, working with my very good team at the ACC to realize it. But I don't need to remind you that it took only two years for us to trailblaze in all global indexes. And it's easy to go over them. For example, the MCC scorecard at that time when I made that speech and promise at State House, we are 49%. Today, as I sit here, we have 81%. It's the highest ever. Last year, we were the only country in the world that was chosen to develop the compact because of in the middle of it is our seriousness in the fight against corruption. The data is startling. What we are doing is amazing. We have jumped 12 places in Transparency International Scorecard from 131 when I came in to 117 where we sit now. Our flow barometer has measured corruption to say that in 2017, we corruption prevalence was 70%. Today, it's as low as 40%. No matter what the index is you look at, Syria is performing favorably. It means we have delivered massively on the promise that was made. And I particularly feel honored to have been given this opportunity by the president to do this and giving me the, the support and being part of the journey to ensure that we get to where we are today. We are by no means out of the woods, but trust me, if I look at that speech and look at where we are today, I can tell God thank you for what we have done for Sierra Leone and where we are heading presently. Uh, on, on, on comparative basis, what do you see as the, the biggest accomplishments since your appointment? I think the biggest accomplishments really are not things that are mostly seen. You could say the number of convictions, for example. We have one of the highest conviction rates ever in the fight against corruption in the world. Our conviction rate is over 95%. That could be seen as an accomplishment. But I am aware that fighting corruption is really 20% is 20 about the people, but it is more 80% about the systems and processes. So the biggest achievement we have done, really, is the fact that we have developed systems, we have integrity management committees in more than 96 MDAs in Sierra Leone, and we have systems across the board that are helping mitigate and reduce corruption. So see, that is the biggest achievement, really, in our efforts in the fight against corruption. But you could also say the trailblaze that we are trailblazing in all global indexes could be something we should celebrate. What's the favorite part of your leadership? My favorite part is... What, what excites you most? It's, it's when I get to commune with the people, when I go around, when we, we have the town hall meetings, when I work with students, the public lectures, when I go to this community and people engagement, it's my favorite part. I love working with the people, listening to them, hear what they have to say, and of course doing things according to what their aspirations are and watch how they react to it, how they welcome it. It's my favorite part of the job. And I'm really enjoying doing that because I see that the people are family behind me right across the country, from Mongo to Falabao to Kwedadugu to Bond, to Daru, to Penembu, to Kwendu, wherever you go. We are working with the people and it's really working very well for all of us. What's the best, if you like, best part of you know the leadership advice that you've ever received? I think the, leader, the best leadership advice I have ever received came from the president himself. He said that you are a young man, um, you have a long way to go. You have to keep focus. This country, a lot of things will be thrown at you. People come at you and uh, you face challenges but just keep focused and do what you have to do like posterity judge you at the end of the day. I think it's the best advice. And he has given me a lot of focus and made me really develop a lot of thick skin in the, in the middle of doing this and uh, trying to focus on the results and see what I can achieve for the country.
has your leadership style changed since your appointment? I think my leadership style has gone through transitions, through really, because as you do this, I was about 33 years, 34 years when I was appointed. Today I'm 37 years. Uh, you have learned a lot, you've had experiences, you've worked with other people who are more experienced than you, and that has built you into the man that you are today. I think uh, if I go back to where I was and where I am today, I can see that there has been a lot of education along the way and experience gaining along the way, which has really builds me into who I am and I think that it is a good experience. Now let's look at the basis of your administration, I mean from the point of view of the Commission itself generally. I mean one would say that generally or usually the Commission operates on three like three pronged approaches, you know, as the case may be. Um, one is to fight corruption, one is to prevent and there's this aspect of education and what have you. Yes. Um, let's start with prevention. I mean as a means to fighting corruption generally. Talk to me about the, the the steps that you have taken since your appointment in so far as um, um, preventing corruption is an issue. Like I said, the, 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 the fighting corruption, a lot of people think that it is about people. People are greedy. They want the good things of life. They want shortcuts in life. They want to get everything they can get. So a fight against corruption that focuses on people is problematic because corruption is a, is 20% people, but you can solve it by 80% systems and processes. And that is where prevention comes in. They say prevention is better than cure. So the system so is to do what we call systems and processes review. We do what we call corruption risk assessment. You assess, look at SLBC for example. What are the risks of assessment here? You look at an institution like the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. What are the corruption risks there? You do those reviews. Then you go ahead and identify those reviews, and then you develop policies and framework that mitigate. You eliminate monopoly. You make sure that power and decision making is not concentrated in one or two people. You eliminate um, what we call opportunities for corruption. For example, where people have access to cash all the time. You, you, you change it to check-based system, to things that leave uh, what we call um, accountability trail, audit trail. You remove the opportunities for corruption, and of course, you ensure that uh, you are. You also remove the incentive for corruption. What makes the person corrupt? If is it because he's not getting good salary? Is it because he feels justified in what he's doing? If you remove those three things through a systems and processes review, you would have reduced corruption very heavily. And it has nothing to do. It has very little to do with the people who are the institution. It's about systems. It is systems that fight corruption, not really people. Do you see public education as an effective means, you know, uh, in fighting corruption? Oh yes. There are, in most countries, fighting corruption, public education is not emphasized, particularly because of how advanced the countries are, how educated people are. But we are deep in the country where the literacy, literacy rate is above 70%. Um, so we are not there, there yet. So public education is really a huge part of what we do. I particularly believe in public education because when you go out to meet people from the young children to the elderly to the chiefs to to the elites you engage them on issues of corruption you'll be surprised how much they learn from it and you're surprised how sometimes they have misgivings about it in most places people don't even know what really is corruption and also they put undue expectations on us because they do not even the most educated people you, I, I sometimes I'm surprised how much you do not really understand what really is corruption and what you can hold people accountable for, particularly within the framework of the anti-corruption. So public education is really useful across the board. How is effective from the top you level to use the that level. tool? I mean, to, to oh yes, we've used it very well. I mean, if you if you notice that I have different approaches. So for example, I do a lot of media engagements. I do a lot of um, public engagements wherever I have an opportunity to really send the message I go. I do a lot of engagement with young people because we have a policy within what I call to build the Sankara dream. is to make the young people to understand the issues and be ready to confront them. Knowledge is power. When they understand, they can act on it. They can do something about it. So I do a lot of public lectures. I do a lot of, lot of educational engagements. But beyond that, 
we go down to the other people who probably are not in public institutions they do not want television we go we have the court barriers we have had court barriers in every rural area in sierra leone from bond to Matrujong to Karine to 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 places in the north where probably you would think that Mongo, one of the farthest places in Sierra Leone, I have gone personally and had town hall meetings there. We have gone to the south, we've gone to the east, we've gone to the far east as far as Quendu, where we sit down with people, commune with them, communicate on the issues of the fight against corruption, listen to them, collect feedback, and sometimes also educate them on what we are doing, where we are heading, and how their support is always useful. So public education has been one of the most powerful tools we have used in the fight against corruption. And it is very useful because when people come to do surveys, this is where we are doing well, it is those very people that they ask, what do you think about the fight against corruption? Their misunderstandings of the issues get into the surveys if you do not from time to time engage them and let them understand what you are doing and of course to also measure their expectations. Now Commissioner, is, is, is the number of cases prosecuted and probably even the number of convictions obtained the best way of assessing the success um, of the fight against corruption? No. Most times that is where, particularly in Africa, we are getting it wrong. People are excited about arrests of individuals, prosecution of individuals, uh, convictions in court and all these things. And we are doing that very well because we understand it's a very important part of the fight against corruption, particularly in terms of perception. But I have again said, and I'll say it again, that is a fight against corruption that targets the person, that targets the people. It can only account to 20% of the success of the fight against corruption. The 80% of the success against corruption does not target people. It targets systems. It targets operations. It targets your preventive measures. They say prevention is better than cure. That is more important in the fight against corruption as it is important to the health of an individual. The English usually say that an ounce of prevention is better than tons of remedy. That is a message they're sending you. So whenever you prevent, for example, if you set up systems in the ACC that reduce corruption risk, that reduce everything that has to do corruption. You don't have to prosecute or arrest anybody. You can sit down. In fact, you can go to sleep. That is how countries of the world have been able to solve the problems of corruption. But that requires serious investment and requires a whole government approach to fighting corruption. It is not about the Anti-Corruption Commission. It's not about particular institutions that form the cluster in the fight against corruption like all these services are alluded. It is a whole government approach to fighting corruption for the government to invest in preventive measures across the board in the public service and that will help in the fight against corruption. So arresting people, prosecuting them, taking them to court, that is a fire brigade kind of fighting corruption. You come with the ambulance and sometimes the house is already burnt before you put in fire and people will see you that you put the fire out but the house is burnt. So the real strength of the fight against corruption lies in investing in prevention. Now we, are, we have as a country to invest in systems, in processes. If we don't do that, we can continue to score the goals, but they are only short-term goals. We have to invest, and that is not about ACC. ACC does not have the resources to ensure that there is preventive measures in NRA, preventive measures in every public institution in Sierra Leone. It's a whole government approach to solving the issues of corruption. The question is how? How is it done? How is it done? Yeah. It's an investment. The government has to, to, first of all, study the system. For example, if you take Botswana, that is what Botswana did. Botswana brought in experts. Some of these experts, one of them is paid a million dollars for a month to help you deploy systems. You deploy performance management systems. You deploy reward systems. You make sure that your, 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 your infrastructure is audit proof. If anybody touches public money, public money, there is a, what we call an audit trail that leads to him. So it is easier to detect corruption and easier to prosecute and punish. It is really about investment. It is a whole government decision making that the resources we have, instead of going for short term gains, things that will bring us popularity now, let us invest in reducing corruption. Are we positioned all countries for that, do you think? I, I think that the country does not have the resources to be able to do that now. 
it's, it's very expensive. Is that a flying ointment and the fight against corruption here? I, I, I think that I have to be realistic about it. After doing this for three years, we have made a lot of gains. We have made a lot of successes, particularly because of our posture and, of course, of the support that we are getting from the government. And, of course, the government's own posture as well and involvement in the fight against corruption. Really, what we have done is exemplary in Africa, and we have been praised everywhere. Tomorrow, I am presenting to the entire Commonwealth of our successes. I don't think there's any country in Africa that has been this successful in the fight against corruption within a short period of time. I am doing that presentation at 11 tomorrow to the entire Commonwealth um, from across the world, whether it's the Caribbean. But what I am trying to say is we can build on it by investing in systems and processes. And I have to agree that I have sat down and looked at the investment, the government portfolio that has, and I really, really have seen the problem. I know the solution. But you know when they say the monkey wants to box and the hands are short? This is the situation that we all find ourselves. We need to... I will not let you go away with that. What's that solution, Commissioner? The solution, the solution to the problem that you are... The solution is to hold a lot of things constant. E.G.? For certain development uh, things that we are doing that are short-term goals, we are leaving the buckets to be leaking whilst we are investing on those. If we hold those things constant and really invest in systems and processes, which across the board we see the system, we'll be able to generate more revenue, and with more revenue, we'll be able to invest more into other things. But as we stand now, the government is always under pressure. It wants to invest in the fight against corruption. Oh, a bridge has broken there, we have to build that bridge. Oh, there are things happening there. Free quality education is here. Twenty-one percent of the budget is going to free quality education. There are so many things that the government wants to do at the same time, and it does not really give them that opportunity to invest. If you look at Georgia, Georgia solved the fight, the issue of the fight against corruption by investing massively. Talking about the investment, investment commissioner. Talking about the investment. Should I be listening to you now? Should I be pessimistic? about um, the real success, I mean, in stamping out corruption in the country. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't get me wrong. What I'm trying to say is that we are successful with what we are doing. First of all, if you look at it in terms of prevention, I have told you that we have over 96 integrity management committees mm -hmm. in public institutions, okay? When it comes to prosecution, we have over 94% conviction rate. Okay? Our public education drive is one of the, the massive engagements across the country. And of course, right now as I speak, and I'm sure you are aware, when the Center for Accountability and Rule of Law did the survey about people's perception about the fight against corruption, they asked ordinary Israeli, have you heard about the fight against corruption? Do you know what the anti-corruption is doing? Over 92% said yes. When they did that three years ago, it was 19%. So there, is, there are a lot of things also to celebrate. All right. Now there are a lot of successes. Let me just anchor on this. And we don't have to be pessimists. I am always saying that we have brought the country thus far. Trust me, as I speak to you now, when the president promised in parliament that he was going to make corruption unfashionable, oh boy, we have done that. People are afraid. Across the board, I'm not saying that we have eliminated corruption, but they know that the level of impunity that used to exist no longer exists. So people look over their shoulders. They are being careful. But this is not the time for us to focus on them. This is not the time for us to seal the system. So we don't go back to 49% where we were in 2017. So we don't go back to 70% corruption prevalence according to our full barometer. We are 40%. We can seal it there and reduce it to 19%. So all I am trying to see. On the third anniversary of my being commissioner of the Anti-Corruption Commission, I am saying and I am calling on the country to invest in prevention. We have brought the country thus far to avoid it from going back to where we have taken it. Based on the promise that was made on the 28th of June in that office that said we will launder the image of the country to make sure we perform better indexes, we are delivering on it very heavy. I'm okay. sure the president is very proud. You've heard his speeches. He makes a lot of reference to this. Let me but we have to invest to make sure that we do not go back again. Let me invite your attention to another issue that has to do with the judiciary, essentially. I mean, um, you, 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 I mean it is an important 
component in the fight against corruption. What steps have you taken to ensure um, that the judiciary is on board as a key player um, in that fight? Um, as you know, like I said, we recognize that um, people are very happy when the judiciary is, 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 is the outcome of the work of the judiciary is there. I mean, we have convictions in court, we have huge fines that are imposed, people call for custodial sentence, and I think that is very important. And I continue to encourage the judiciary to be very firm and strong when it comes to sentences, fines, and of course we should impose custodial sentence. What we did was to make sure we set up the anti-corruption division of the High Court, which focuses on our cases, and that has been going very well. Our prosecutions are going very fast. We are getting a lot of convictions, we are, since I've been there, we have not lost more than three cases at all. And this is three years now. But we have won over six cases. cases. Do you think? Uh, about, about 51 cases. Right. We have won over about 647 of them. And we continue to win. And you see that recently we have sent, we've sent more indictments involving the high, the low, whatsoever sector of society we have indicted people. And the cooperation for the judiciary is very good. The Chief Justice particularly is very interested in the fight against corruption. I have engaged engagements with him. His judges that have been appointed to sit in the anti corruption division of the High Court are doing very well in their own way. All I am encouraging them is to know that they have to increase the fines when there is a conviction. They have to be a little bit firm with the way their posture. I have always had a problem with their posture. They, they, they are, they are, they are. People go for anti-corruption cases, they, are, they want to go on holidays, they easily get bail and all those kinds of things. If you want to send a strong message with the fight against corruption, your posture, the way you deal with the case in court has to reflect. And they are doing very well, but they just need to improve on should that. Should the posture be emotional? Uh, you know, is the posture powerful? should lack emotion. They should make sure that they should know that the country is at war and they are gatekeepers of that war. But they are acting within and, the law. I mean, they have a law. They are, they are, no, 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 they are acting within their discretion. It is their discretion to give bail or not to give bail. It is their discretion to impose a fine or to look at this man because of their look at some people who just charged people at like EDSA for stealing six billion euros within one year. Six billion euros. And we are not getting electricity in our homes and we are grumbling. But if those people go to court and they do not get the right punishment imposed on them, that is not about the law. It is about the discretion of the judge. You can see the aggravated circumstances. There is a lot of discretion, Commissioner. Yeah, it provides the discretion, but it gives you the backbone for you to act on it. And that is why it gives you a limit. It says you can sentence to give more 50 million euros, but it leaves it open for you to sentence to 1 billion euros. It says you can sentence to give more of 5 years, but it leaves it open for you to sentence to 100 years. Let's start sentencing people. They are, they are sentencing people for sexual offenses for 10 years, 15 years. Every day we are having headlines. That's now it. people are 35 years. They are sentencing people to 60 years imprisonment. Why can't we have the sentences coming in for corruption? I think we have to take the fight against corruption as seriously as we feel about it. So if the sentences continue to be the minimum, then there's a problem there. All right. Now, one of the challenges, I mean, we all know we have these specialized courts for um, the anti-corruption cases and all of these things. Um, you just mentioned special judges now, I mean, say by the, 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 the chief justice was ensured that they have now special courts for anti-corruption matters, which is a specialized cause in a way. But you will also notice that um, one of the challenges with these specialized, um, you know, anti-corruption courts, you know, at the high courts generally, is the fact that um, the, the, the courts at appeals level, and also the one at the Supreme Court level, are not specialized in so far as anti-corruption cases are in issue. So you will find out that most of the cases, or most of the decisions, are likely to be overturned. Well, that is the problem. Uh, I am pleased to tell you that since I became commissioner, none of the convictions that we have had has been overturned. In fact, there has only been an appeal in our cases. Only two cases are appealed. The Shias Moses matter is under appeal. They went to the Court of Appeal and lost the case in the Court of Appeal. They have filed an appeal in the Supreme Court. We are arguing currently in the Supreme yeah. Court. All other cases, when the lower courts gives a decision, and that is the change. It's a shift from what used to happen at the ACC. You remember, there was a very good commissioner there called Abu Tijan Kohl, and he got a lot of convictions. Most of them were overturned in the next three, four years on appeals. So I wanted to see what was happening there. 
But trust me, they are not even appealing against our judgments. Our decisions are not appealed because of the quality of evidence we take to the courts. And of course, the quality of the decision is coming from this specialized court. Nobody is daring to appeal against it. In fact, if you look at it, many people are pleading guilty in our anti-corruption cases more than ever before. So it tells you that there's a revolution happening with the fight against corruption. And of course, I can tell you that one of that is the, 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 the quality of judges that are making the decisions. And of course, the quality of the prosecution that we are doing and the evidence we are taking to court against them. If you appeal, you are wasting your time. And I can assure you. The ACC on your tenure has also entered into a number of civil settlements with individuals to repay money you know, that um, um, have been actually deposited into the Consolidated Revenue Fund. Can you explain the basis for this? Uh, yes, um, of course, the, 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 the UNCAC, the, the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, provides that when you are fighting corruption, you should diversify the fight against corruption and approach it from three-pronged approach. That is the criminal approach, which is what really used to happen in Sierra Leone. There was too much running to the court. But it also says you should use civil approaches to fighting corruption, and they particularly recommend what we call a non-conviction-based asset recovery. You can go after the assets without going to court, okay? And of course, you should use the administrative approach. What we have done, that UNCAC is ratified by Sierra Leone, by the way. So, uh, so that is part of our laws in Sierra Leone. So when I became commissioner, I realized that our focus on the fight against corruption was too court-based. We were losing at all fronts. In fact, it was not a respected fight against corruption because a fight against corruption that goes after the person and not the asset is a weak fight against corruption. You can get all the convictions you want. You can get people sentenced to what you want. But what about the money they stole? What about the houses that they built? What about the cars that they got? If you don't go after them and get them back, you are a weak anti-corruption fighter. So when I came, we decided to go after the assets as well. And I can tell you this. In one year, we have already got um, gotten half of, almost half of what was collected in the two in the 18 years existence of the ACC before I became commissioner. By the time we got to two years, we have doubled that. As I speak here today, we have collected over 31 billion euros in cash from the corrupt and giving back to the government. We have collected houses, hotels, vehicles, which we have handed over to the government. Commissioner, you may have collected a lot of those. Yes. But a civil settlement actually tied into fighting corruption. No, that is the point. It's so some people even say it's, it's just like a bandage to the wound. But that is the point, that because they do not understand. When you go after the asset and you take the asset away from the person, for example, we have a case now where one of the people are settling. They want to settle and we are selling their house to recover the money that was stolen. If you sell that man's house and he becomes poor in society, he does not have a home to live in. You take, go into his bank account, the little money that he has kept there, you take everything from him. You make him poor into society. The message you send to, it is the biggest public institution that you have. That is what Lin Kuan Yu did in, 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 in Singapore. His best friend was corrupt. He stripped him of everything and put him back in society. And he was working bare-fitted in society and everybody was saying, most of his people who are corrupt, they go to churches, they go to mosques, they go to, 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 to places where they are respected. And people do not know that they are corrupt. But now, we are exposing their corruption by putting up press release to say they are corrupt and saying that we have collected billions from them and they go back in society. How do they look at their pastor? How do they look at their reverence? How do they even go to the workplace that they used to work before? It is, the most, it is one of the most effective tools of fighting corruption. We have been focusing on the wrong things. And you hear people say all these things all the time. Oh, it is not a deterrent. What do they mean about by a deterrent? There is nothing more time than making a man poor. By making him go beg his friends to collect money to go and pay to the ACC, and some of them don't give him, and the ACC is after him until they take away the last penny from him. Any fact that is corruption that uses all these approaches that we are using, including the deterrent, the very, I'm telling you, we're charging people to go and convict them. We just charged the six from SLAB, seven from SLAB, including the, the head of the institution. We just charged nine from EDSA. We are combining various approaches to fight against corruption that is succeeding for the country. I think that is that that is really the focus. Can we assure the public that the that individuals asked to to repay the monies are actually paying in full? Of course, if that is the bottom line. You pay in full. We will never take from you what you did not steal. In fact, most times we take more. We take what you stole, and we take more of it. So, um, do you take interest? 
Yes, so the law now it. says that you have to pay a minimum of 10 percent interest. We have amended the law, remember, yeah. 2019. We now say is that you pay in addition to whatsoever you stole a 10 percent interest. So, you see, we are winning on all fronts, and these things are really what it takes to, to, to be able to change the fight against. Do you monitor the money paid into the consolidated fund just so they are not further misappropriated? No, no, we are, we, we, in fact, what we did was to the government set up a a special recovery account at Bank of Sierra Leone where these monies that we receive go, that's what we transfer it, and they are purpose driven. So for example, if it is to be employed in the healthcare sector, we'll make sure that it's done. The student loan scheme that is starting, eight billion of that money that we have been collected has been allocated to the student loan scheme. So we are using the money that we are collecting from the ACC to give hope, to develop people, build a diagnostic facility, invest in student loans so that more people can be educated, what more can you do for a country than that? You take money that was lost to corruption, you use it to invest and build the people. That is what the president has promised, and that is what the president is doing, and we are very happy that they are, they are focused on that. You just identified the million gains that the country has made uh, in the areas of the MCC scorecard, transparency, I mean, international, the corruption, you know, perception, survey, and the like. What goal have you set yourself for the 2020, 2021, if you like, uh, yeah, so far as um, the scores are in issue. I think we, 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 for example, in the MCC score now, at 81% really, all you can try to do is to maintain it. And that is the goal there, to make sure that we do not go back to what we used to be. Um, in, the, in, the, in the Transparency International Indexes, we have been climbing gradually, steadily, from 131, we are now 117. My goal is before I leave the, the ACC, Sierra Leone should move to plus or minus 80 in the global indexes of the fight against corruption, which is really, really a respectable place to be. And the way we are going, we could get there, like I said, if we invest in prevention, because we have really sent the message, we have made corruption unfashionable, we have educated the public to understand the ills of corruption, we have tried to deploy systems in place, but it's now really a question of investment. And once that investment is done, with proper audit trails, you do what they call, you kill dog, for dog, let dog knows it die day. We strengthen our laws. The judiciary starts imposing 25 year sentences custodial for people who are corrupt instead of giving them the minimum that's prescribed by law. And then we'll see where Sierra Leone will be. I can assure you, that thing people say that Sierra Leone will never change, it's a joke. Sierra Leone can change very easily. Are you a fan of questions? questions. This is. It just requires consistent action and they know that you be business. If I am a fan of perception indexes... Yeah, the per perception... Oh, yes, I, I am a very big Do fan. they reflect the reality? I am, in fact, let me tell you something. Most like perception is the reality. Perception is more important than the reality. If, for example, you are wearing a white shirt and most people around you think that it is gray, trust me, there is nothing you can do about it. They believe it is great. You can say whatever you want. So it is what the people think. It is what they believe that matters. You have to manage it well. If you do not manage it well, it will wreck you. It will bring down governments. It will bring down statesmen. It will destroy people. It was perception that killed Jesus Christ because they felt that he was not the Messiah. So you have to manage it well. If you manage perception well, it will be balanced with the reality on the ground. So for example, we are convicting people every day. We have the highest conviction rate. But if everybody in Sierra Leone believes that ACC is losing all these cases, and if people come to do surveys, they ask them, say ACC is losing all these cases, we should become more important. The fact that the data shows that we are winning more cases, or the people believe that we are not even winning a single case at all. So I am a big fan of perception. I believe that if you bring the perception along, the reality is easy to fall into place. The program is bottom line. It's coming to you from Broadcasting House here in New England. We will now go for a short break and we will come. We will again engage the commissioner on his tour across the country, engaging people, engaging the local community about the fight against corruption and how that has impacted on the country or the very fight itself, or probably what it is doing as we move along. The program is Bottom Line. My name is Joseph Ibinda Kapua. I want to show you how it all went in different areas, Kabala, Komno, Bo, Kenema, the island in Bonf, and other areas as the commissioner traveled. We'll talk on that after the show break.
Welcome back to the program of Land. My guest tonight is the Commissioner of the Anti-Corruption Commission, Francis Ben Kai Fala Esquire. I mean, you just saw the, the footages of the view of your trip or your tour across the country. But I mean, it was more or less um, a tour to um, preach to the people uh, or send a message about corruption, you know, the need to fight corruption and what have you. But it's all about merrymaking and what, what's the sense behind those footages, uh, Commissioner? Well, really, those footages are, are side events. The actual engagement was a town hall meeting okay. where I sit and um, present the fight against corruption to them, That how the president has, has really spearheaded it, how he has given us the support to succeed at it and led us to where we are. And then the people ask questions, they raise issues, we answer them. It was really engaging. So this footage is the damn thing is just really when you go to these places where you, you have to build to blending, you identify with yeah. them, you you make them feel comfortable with you. If not they will just see you and oh this is a book man don't come for can tell we book 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 business. So it's just, just, it's easy dancing. Oh yes yes I enjoy <laughs> dancing this traditional uh, music singing with them and uh, enjoying you saw me and the Parman chief in Daru and other places this you're seeing is from Bond Island where we go to Bond and the the island was very happy it was the first time if I can tell you in all these places that I have gone whether in the north south east they all tell you that is the first time that a commissioner of the anti-corruption commission in the 21 years existence of the anti-corruption commission has ever come to discuss corruption with them to sit down with them to commune with them sometimes i stay in the communities i sleep there at night they come and visit they give bring their issues and everything it's a way of really getting them to accept the fight against corruption in a way and when you listen to them when i sat down in these town hall meetings i realized how much our people really understand the issues that we take for granted? Talk to me about the issues, some so issues. No, they will, they will, they, most times it is more local issues. For example, there are teachers that are not being paid on time. 
the, the, the examination of practice issues, bridges and culverts that have not been built, there are chiefs, these people who cut their cases, the, 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 the traditional chiefs and elders, the fines that they impose, somebody who has gotten judgment in his or her favor that has not been paid and they think that is corruption. Bush fights. I have won my case that this bush belongs to me, but the chief has not taken a step for me to get it. So it's an array of issues that deal with them. They are not interested in the grand corruption issues that really we discuss mostly in Freetown. They are more concerned about the things that touch their personal lives. The roads, the bridges, the culverts, the chiefs, the, the chiefdom councils, the district councils, how they are interfacing with them. If they feel marginalized, they will say that we are marginalized because all development is going to that other chiefdom, it's not coming to us. So it's those kinds of things you talk with them, but in the process of it, you really send the message of how serious we are about the fight against corruption. And I must tell you again, they really appreciate what they are doing across the country. They will tell you that, yes, anti-corruption, we are hearing what you are saying. We really, really hear your public education people who are here, they will call them by names, they will identify them by names. They will identify cases that they have referred to our regional offices that have been dealt with. So, it tells us, one thing I got from this is something I had always suspected that Freetown, which most times we think is the entire Sierra Leone, is only 1.2 million people. But there is a 4.8 million people out there that we have to touch and connect with and we have to go for them and that is exactly what this tour did and it was really, really one of those if i have to look back at this stage as one of the things that i have done which i thought really really impacted the lives of the people these tours are one of them it sent a message it made them to have visibility of the fight against corruption and they felt appreciated they felt appreciated that i could go there and sit with them they could touch, you saw them dancing, yeah. they could hold me, they could hold me. We went to, to Kwendu, for example, I spoke kissy to them. They were shocked to hear me speak kissy. Just to introduce, and, to, and that was to make them see that I am your son, because my mother comes from Kwendu, and I learned kissy during the war. Was it a free we town, kissy, or? No, 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 I learned during the war, you know, we went as refugees in Guinea, and I was there for a little while, and in that process, I assimilated kissy, and I could speak it very well. I speak kissy very well. So. They, they, firstly, they were shocked to see me speak Kisi, but it made them accept more because they identified me as one of them, and of course, they raised their issues. And they, they, they were so it's, it's, it's really a fulfilling thing. We go to places like Kabala, we go as far as the villages to the Wawa Hills, sit down with them. They bring polio, I don't drink polio, and they will drink polio around me, and they will have my water, and we all will be dancing and singing. It's really something which Let's I Let's talk enjoy. about the public lectures. And we have also had about invitations, even within and outside the country, to address communities about uh, corruption. Nigeria and other areas you traveled to talk to them as, um, about corruption, and probably to present serious uh, situation. How has that impacted and what picture does that send from our end? Uh, firstly, when it comes to these public lectures here, we are talking about the next generation of leaders, people, students, the university community. I have gone to, to many of the universities from Jala to Frabe College to, to Port Loco to Makini, Unimac, all these places I have gone tomorrow. On Thursday, I will be at the Canadian College in in, in my one yeah. to address them and the young people are buying in they are following they appreciate they want me some of these people they practically come to the commission and practically will have to kneel in my office to see commissioner you have to come and give us this public lecture we are dying to hear from you we want to see what you have to say and it's the way i package these messages and deliver it to them they, they are fascinated by it. They want to hear more of it. And it is our approach to capturing the minds of the young people at this stage so that we can employ it well for the good of the country. But beyond that, what we are doing in Sierra Leone is being noticed across the world. If it is not that for COVID, you know before COVID, the demand for me to speak at events, at, at occasions in different countries, from Nigeria to Tanzania to Botswana and other places, 
have increased with time. These days I do a lot of presentations in virtual conferences across the world. In Africa, the United States government invested, invited me recently to address the Yali conference on behalf of, 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 of people from across the world, particularly Africa, on the anti-corruption efforts we are doing in Sierra Leone. And they are fascinated and impressed by the results that are being produced in Sierra Leone. And of course, they want to hear what is this model? In Sierra Leone, we have a model of the fight against corruption. What is this model? They particularly tell me, Francis, you have to speak about this more so that other countries in Africa can employ it. It's working in Sierra Leone. It should work. So, for example, when we talk about the non-conviction based asset recovery, they tell me we have never seen a situation where people voluntarily pay money. How are you doing it? How will people come and give you billions of leos? They corrupt according to say, yes, we stole. Here it is, please. Forgive us. How are you doing it? How can we use that and export it to, to Angola? How can we do it in Malawi, in Kenya, in Uganda? It's something that we are doing. And how is your formula doing? So I give a lot of talks and public lectures on this. And like I told you, tomorrow I am addressing the the Commonwealth Conference on Terrorist Models of the Fight Against Corruption. And it's not only me. Our president was invited recently to address the entire United Nations on the fight against corruption. That is a position of respectability that is now placed. We are now known as a model and symbol of the fight against corruption. Let's come back to home, uh, Commissioner. I mean, aside the tour to the regions and other areas, aside the public lectures, what steps have you taken to get MDs in the country about? I have said that we, we, we have we, we, our national anti-corruption strategy involves taking a whole government approach in fighting corruption. And what we have done is to establish in every ministry, department of agency, I'm sure they have come to SLBC mm -hmm. to set up your integrity management committees. So it's like a mini anti-corruption commission, your institution, by your staff, who make sure that they remind everybody about the fight against corruption and to hold them accountable and to work with us for trainings. We've done it in 96 ministries, departments, and agencies across the board in the country. It's the largest ever, and it's really working well. And that has helped to minimize corruption. Because sometimes, like you rightly said about public education, people don't even know. They do things that are wrong, that are corrupt. They are not aware that it's corruption. But these integrity management committees help. We have also worked to do what we call systems and processes review in, all, in most MDAs that are high corruption risk. And that system supposed to view is meant to minimize and reduce corruption. So this is how we are working with them. And I'm glad to tell you that when a full barometer measured recently, corruption privilege in the civil service has reduced from 80% to 35%. That is a huge reduction in the civil service across the board in, in, in the country. National Revenue Authority is another area where corruption prevalence has reduced from about 60% to nearly 31 and 32%. So these are all really short-term gains that we have had that are not really heralded by people okay. but it is really really significant for corruption to reduce in the public service from 80 percent to 2 percent now let's also turn the microphone to our viewers and probably those following us on radio through the text messages this one here is curbing corruption is not a woman job the entire government above all things to be actively involved this is from Jonathan T. Moima. I'm watching from Maryland, Ben. I'm so proud of you. This is from Elino Hansels. Mr. Commissioner, a senior prison officer is standing trial in magistrate court for allegedly studying mattresses meant for prisoners. Please pay attention to that matter. The fight against corruption is a collective one and requires a patriotic and nationalistic action now is the time. This is from Joseph Blackie. To what extent is attitudinal change of the public service a must so that huge government investment is systems and processes to prevent corruption achieved and to achieve the desired results? This is from Sir Salia. Commissioner, when do you talk when you talk of prevention of corruption? especially through systems or system building does the role of the other regulatory entities such as audit services procurement authority hrmo do they matter at all i mean this is what this text is trying to say if yes 
do we expect from these complementary entities? I mean, these are some of the messages coming in. Continue to send them to the number you see on the screen, 030 639 You may want to respond to a few concerns. Yes, uh, I, I think most of them are complementary, yeah. so we appreciate what they are saying. But the last question that you read is really the most significant one. In that it is asking what is the role of these other institutions. Now, the, the Anti-Corruption Commission has an anti-corruption strategy. We just adopted a new anti-corruption strategy for the next two years. And that anti-corruption strategy emphasizes a cluster approach to fighting corruption. A cluster approach against the fighting corruption is not about the anti-corruption commission. It's about every other institution that is working within integrity management. So the, 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 the text that there is spot on. He identified public service, HRMO, other institutions like uh, the MPPA who are in charge of procurement, and even the Ministry of Finance. It's a cluster that has to come together and all of us have to be in sync. We cannot be acting in cross purposes. The other service really, we cannot be acting in cross purpose with the ACC. The ACC cannot be acting in cross purposes to audit service revenue. We all have to have one vision and direction and we all coordinate together. And I'm also happy to tell you this. That we have set up a high panel of that cluster and we are meeting on Tuesday under the auspices of the coordinator of the, the, the MCC. Uh, I am working with Madame De Chroma and we have set up this auspices. The vice president is going to chair that meeting on Tuesday for us to be able to work together to be able to cleanse the country of corruption. And it is not about the ACC alone, it's not about the service alone, it's about everybody acting in that regard. But generally, yes. I'm happy that all the textiles are making reference to prevention. If I leave this office today, I want to alone to remember that the fight against corruption is not about who is anti-corruption commissioner. It is not about who the anti-corruption commission arrests or prosecutes or investigates. It's about the systems that the country can put into place to prevent corruption. If we invest in that, if it happens while I am there, I would say I am very grateful. But if it does not happen whilst I am there and I leave and somebody else comes in, we have to understand that firstly, it is 20% about people, but it is 80% about systems. And we have to invest into ensuring that it will be difficult to do in the short term because it will take a lot of money, it will take a lot of resources. It means some other areas have to suffer. But once we do that, we'll put the country on a firm footing to enter perfectly into the 21st century and prosper as a nation. Now, Commissioner, you challenged yourself with uh, making corruption a very uh, high-risk venture. I mean, one investigation that was and probably still is of paramount significance to many Sierra Leoneans has to do um, with the former president, Ernest by Kuma. I mean, on this same show, bottom line, sometime back, you had this to say, and uh, let's have a listen. We've been investigating President Kuma a long time. So firstly, I have to make it clear that the invitation to President Kuma is not really predicated upon the conclusions of the COI. Although issues in the COI were there, but we have to understand this now, that there are investigations which we have started, which concern and touch President Kuma, which were before us. We were just waiting for the right time to speak to him. And... Uh, these investigations have gone in advanced stages, but it would be unfair for us to reach a conclusion without having to speak to him. There are also several files which have spoken to previous government officers, including the secretary to president to him, Mr. Oshokuka, those people right. have been making statements to the ACC. Okay, ministers, issues concerning various parastatals, the dealings of NATCOM, for example. NATCOM. There are many things when you speak to them, they will say we did it because the president asked us to do so. The president telephoned and said this should happen. The president was involved somehow. They gave executive clearance for it to be done. It is only but fair in him for us to have a conversation with him around these things, for him to have his own views on them. You know how Sierra Leone is. People always say that the part tell me. But it is possible that the party did not even tell them. It is now our responsibility to confront President Kuma with some of these things, for him to have a view on it. And we were going to do so with all respect 
him. But I, 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 I find it strange, first of all, he the letter, a notice which basically showed that he was enraged by the invitation to make a statement. No, no, sir. He's not above the law. And it is interest for him to speak up. So, uh, spoke to bottom line on the issue. What do we know about the status of that investigation? Uh, I, I, I think you know that you know that going beyond that interview, we eventually spoke to President Cromer. Yeah. Uh, we had three engagements with him, took statements from him, and uh, the file is now on the administrative work. The various teams at the ACC are working on it. So it is very much in progress. We have gone beyond the interview stage. But what that interview did was to show that no one is above the law. Now then, uh, of course, somebody who has occupied the highest office in the country was subjected to questioning on anti-corruption and integrity issues. Uh, that alone was a strong message that was sent as to how we are serious as a country to move beyond what used to be and to hold everybody accountable. But now the outcome of it really is that it's closing stages, but that is still with us and uh, we are working on it. As and a course, the investigations can take years. In Kenya, they can investigate one case for five, six, seven, eight, nine years, ten years. In Nigeria, in other places, in Sierra Leone, we have a special court now for anti-corruption matters. Yes, we do have a special court for anti-corruption matter, but it's only when investigations are completed that it gets there. This is under investigation; it has not gotten to that stage yet. As a commission, are you highly likely to to discharge the threshold for prosecution? Uh, the, the threshold of prosecution will depend on the quality of evidence that we have and it goes through a processing from investigations to prosecution, opinions are put in and then it's advised to the commission and then the commissioner takes final decision. And at the stage we are, it is still at that level where it has not come to the commissioner for final decision making yet. With over 50 or about 50 prosecutions and over 45, 46, 47 um, convictions and all of these things, is it likely that uh, this will be the, the position of the commission? I mean, what we observe at the ACC is that you seldom um, investigate matters, I mean, for prosecution and let them lie that way. I mean, once they get to court, the likelihood, I mean, like you said yourself, is that um, you, you you get convictions. Are we likely to see it in court? The Scorpion Squad moves with precision, the ACC moves with precision, when we charge the court. And I've always said this, when I put my signature on an indictment and take it to court, I'll be surprised for anybody to walk with. Are we likely to see the honest by Chroma? We are likely to see that that case is concluded soon, but I speak with you. I'm not in a position to tell you what direction it will take because, like I said, we have processes in the ACC. It is at one of the most final stages for it to reach the commissioner yet. So, and I don't put them under pressure. I allow them to do their work professionally to take decisions, for example, after the investigations have finished their investigation, they prepare a report, it goes to the... Do they have timeline, by the way? Yes, they usually have a timeline, but I can tell you that it's it's, it's that that is very final stages for it to not come on final decision making. So it's still there, it's still there. Are we talking about a month? Uh, I can't give you a timeline, but I will tell you that that issue will be resolved soon. Within this year? I cannot tell you a timeline. All right, um, um, I, I, I take that, Commissioner. But then, um, Another issue of concern um, has to do with the leak of the, the African press. I mean, it was all over the place, I mean, during these three years. I mean, I mean this year, some part of last year, it's alleged serious um, allegations against the offices of the, um, the former chief minister you know, in the office of the first lady. Um, how did your commission handle those issues? Uh, um, firstly, the Africanist press issue is Africanist press is considered a whistleblower, so we are very careful in dealing with them. But we realize that um, we had to be a little bit more careful about it because the Africanist press issue was mixing a lot of things together at the same time um, and trying to push us in a direction that we felt was we had to be careful about. So, for example. We have our mandate under Section 7 of the Anti-Corruption Act, which, of course, uh, also includes the, the offenses that we can investigate and we can prosecute. So the Africanist press was bundling a lot of things together, claims of corruption, claims of wasteful spending, claims of abuse of, of, of resources and all those things, based on one account, which is the government expenditure. So 
it became difficult because they were calling all of it corruption. And we had to peel through to determine which one is really a corruption allegation and which one is just really a waste to spending or claims of waste to spending, but it is still normal spending within the government framework. So, for example, if somebody travels for 15 days and gets 15 days per diem, if you call it corruption, fine. But it is allowable expenditure within the framework or the architecture of government. So if you now say that that person is corrupt and the ACC should arrest him, no, sir, the ACC will not arrest the person. Also, most of the issues, in fact, African Express, the account details they got came from the, the, the audited account of government expenditure bankruptcy. How they got access to it, they knew. So they were capable of identifying that one million euros was paid to this contractor. Therefore, it is corrupt, but that's not how corruption works. Because one million euros is paid to a contractor, does not therefore mean it is corrupt. We have to forensically look at it to determine why that payment was made and why, if it went through the correct processes, if it went through the correct approval systems, if it's an authorized expenditure within the framework of government, you may be unhappy about it. You may think that somebody is making millions for doing very little. But that is not what we do. That is your emotion. That is your feeling. But to call it corruption, that is not how the ACC operates. The ACC will have to look at it. How did this person access this expenditure? Did this go through formal processes? Was it approved? Is it an authorized expenditure? Is his authority allowed to do that? Once that those boxes are ticked at correct, we cannot say it is corrupt. So when we started clarifying some of these issues, it was easy. The African Express itself started attacking us, and we were trying to engineer public this this. this public to, to feel like we are trying to defend the corrupt. No, sir, we are not defending the corrupt. Our mandate is prescribed by law. If you want certain things to change, for example, if you don't want the president to travel and go with Padiem, you can go and lobby Padiem to change the law. But you do not come to the ACC. The ACC does not change the law. If you think that such expenditure is in excess, one billion euros for President's trip to Botswana, if you want that to change, go to Parliament to cap the expenditure of Parliament. But I am not going to arrest the president or those around the president because they traveled to Botswana and they were all paid by it. So it is these kinds of things that really the Africanist press did. And it, it, it was an unfortunate situation. We really appreciate what they are doing because they are partners in the fight against corruption. And what they were saying is important for public discourse. But when they started using it to decampaign the fight against corruption, to try to bring down the successes that Sierra Leone is getting in the fight against corruption. They were doing more disservice to Sierra Leone than anything. They made it to go on the international press to make it look like we are really not doing anything about the fight against corruption. We are just sitting down here doing nothing. But unfortunately, that is not true. In fact, we are doing a lot more about corruption than now. If you make it that because you have said that payments have been made to the, to the wife of the president, for example, for the hands of our girls campaign which we all know is taking place anyway the hands the hands of our girls campaign is one of the most campaign effective campaigns in Sierra Leone on any social issue if you say because money was paid to her for that and it is therefore corruption and therefore Sierra Leone is not fighting corruption because we have not arrested or detained her that is not how it works it's not because we are saying that she should have a cash blank to have access to public funds but we have said section 39 of the public financial management act allows the minister to make such payments and the minister said that is the payment that i did what do you want us to do if you want that law to change go to parliament and lobby parliament to change it all right commissioner i mean uh, on another note i mean recalling your press release on this issue i mean as a commissioner also tried to widen the net um to factor in the office of the former first lady where are we uh, on that we have already put out a press release saying that in fact, for the past 20 years, first ladies have been receiving billions of loans every year. Even the medical was paid for government funds. And that includes the wife of the former president, President Roma. In part of the loan, she will receive 2.5 billion a year. What's the position of your commission on that? My position on that is we are not parliament. It's an authorized expenditure. So if they want to change, you go to parliament and parliament will change it. 
I don't have an opinion on it. I am there to fight culture within the framework of Section 7 of the Anti-Corruption Act. Within the framework of the offenses in the Anti-Corruption Act, which have elements. If I investigate a, an issue and those elements are not there, no matter what you say, I do not have the jurisdiction to do. And like I have said, the almost unfortunate thing about against corruption is we have taken it so high, we have gained so much capital in it that some people want to hijack it for their own use. They want the ACC to do their bidding. They want to eliminate a minister, even when there is no evidence against him. They want the ACC to arrest him. That way he will be removed from office, and then another person who is not available to them can occupy that office. The APC, ACC can never do that. The ACC focuses on the evidence and facts and the law, the legal and the framework. If it's an allowable expenditure, it's an allowable expenditure. So, all of us ladies have been receiving money from the consolidated fund for years. When they travel with their husbands, they receive money just like their husbands receive. If you want to change that, we change the law to say they should not receive it. They are merely the husband's wife. If they are the husband's wife, when they go, the husband should take care of them. If that is the reform, and now that reform is law, and a first lady takes money in part year, you will see what the ACC can do. But we do not change the law. Unfortunately, we do not even make our own laws. Right. So these are all the misconceptions that really muddy the African Express issue. And it is, it is something which really we have struggled with to clarify to the public, to make them understand it's not because we really don't want to do anything about it. It's because this is how it is. All right. Um, let me have you rest for a while and then perhaps invite again your attention to a few messages that are coming in. Mm -hmm. um, there are corruption. This is unclear. My practices, uh, we understand in some areas, not so clear. But then patriotic Sierraleans are very happy for you and members of your team, at least people are now giving accounts of their stewardship. This is from Numa Jacob James. Mr. Ben Kaifala, according to your press statement, you said the current and past police um, have the right to dispose public funds. Have you scrutinized them on how they use funds? Or are you using data from audit service commission to see that they are using these funds in the right way? Mind you, these funds are from uh, taxpayers. This is from Michael Hinduve, um, Lavao Monrovia also. Has the fight against corruption improved service delivery to the very poor who suffer the actual brunt in the business of corruption? What moves have the what roles have the ACT played in health and education areas? And, and so far as this delivery is concerned, and the government cash transfer programs. Mr. Ben, while availing any government or NGO service, have you been part of any type of corruption, or have you paid in any sort of any sort, I see here, to public services to get any public service done? This is from Alpha B um, Bari in New York. Some of the messages are flowing. I wonder if we we'll have time for more messages. But I will allow the commissioner to respond to the few that are coming in. Yes. Um, firstly, as always, we appreciate the public feedback in the fight against corruption and we appreciate them. One of them asked about um, the same issue that has to do with the first lady, yeah. whether we are scrutinizing their expenditure. Yes, their expenditure and that is part of what we said in our press release that the this office which you are questioning was audited. The Auditor General did a thorough audit and made audit recommendations with respect on those expenditures. All we have to do as a country is to now focus on making sure that those audit recommendations are realized. There is no point for us to duplicate. Remember somebody asked how do we complement each other? Yeah. We cannot be acting at cross purposes. Audit service has audited the office of the First Lady and made recommendations. As an ACC, we just need to make sure that those recommendations are realized. And they did. They did in, the, in 2019. So these are all things that are happening that we have to work on. I was asking whether I myself have paid bribe. No, I don't pay bribe. I don't. If I, even when I travel internationally, I, there was a day when I went to Nigeria because they don't know me. And normally when I reach to these airports, I don't. Even if I have a diplomatic passport, I don't use the diplomatic line. I go and join the normal lines and uh, people. And then one of them was asking for money. I said, no, I don't pay bribe. And he was like, who are you? 
That is wrong with you. No, when you no, said no. I was here, you just said, oh, yeah, get, get out of this place. And I move. But in Israel, of course, people know me. My hair sells me out very easily. And uh, even if they wish to do so, they do not. Is there a secret behind this side, man? No, no, there is no secret. It's just, it's just, it's just here. <laughs> is it just a matter of style? It's a matter of style, yes. It's a matter of style. Is it likely to change? Uh, not right now. Not right now. I think I like it this way. <laughs> but let, let me squeeze this um, message in, Commissioner. Uh, please, Mr. Commissioner, when would we get the published list of those who are paying monies back to government? Every time somebody pays money to government, we put out a press release with the name of the so person. It's published I list. I mean, probably a quarter, yeah, as the case may be. Uh, maybe we we'll we'll, we'll, we'll work on that, but uh, we, we have been putting it out there. So if you want to know who are paying, just go to our website. It's there. Thanks, SNBC and Francis Ben Kaifala, for the good job that you guys are doing to clean the saloon of corruption. Please, the NGO sector really needs to also be engaged. The way they are treating issues is a recipe for corruption. This is from Alex. Continue to send your messages. Hopefully, we'll have time to to go through all of these um, the messages that are flowing in. But we have um, about we are now about to end the program, Commissioner. Looking at your three years in office, the highs and the lows. Um, talk to me about the next year. Um, what shape? do you imagine or visualize for next year? I mean, what are your your next steps or your new steps insofar as tackling this is concerned? Well, we are going to continue. We are speaking to a finish line and we have to finish stronger. So, for example, I have another two years in office. In that two years, the fight against corruption is going to be continue to be very robust. And as people have seen, we have now shown that it is, Any not, strategy? it is not just about the past. We have to hold the present strongly accountable. So people in the current government has to realize that they do not have a carte blanche to be corrupt. The same way we held the past government strongly accountable for corruption is the way we continue holding those in current government strongly accountable and to make sure that impunity does not exist and that people take their responsibilities seriously. Now we continue to support the president's vision for good delivery for the people of Sierra Leone, and there will be no excuses and no explanations. We are going to continue to strengthen the systems and process review to ensure that prevention is better than cure, and we continue to prevent corruption and to do well. We are going to continue to put in efforts for the, our performance in global indexes to continue to expand in an upward traje trajectory. Um, we are going to also be doing uh, continued uh, societal mobilization and engagement within the framework of public education and outreach to ensure that the first stage of the fight against corruption continues to be accepted by the people and to mobilize and have their support in pushing it forward. So the strategy continues to be either an improvement on what has already been or to be what is already happening. What level of political um Good will if you like to enjoy. Oh no, I have enjoyed working with President Bio and I have to use this opportunity to thank him. All this we have done, my team at the ACC have been very professional, very supportive, and the country has been very supportive of what we do. But trust me, we wouldn't have been talking about the the, the, the great successes we are having in the fight against corruption if President Bio was not supporting it and that includes the team that he has around him. But of course, when you have a leader who is a visionary, who believes in the fight against corruption, who wants the good of his country, and knows that the fight against corruption is at the center of ensuring that, and he has therefore harnessed our abilities to be able to continue to produce with him standing there whenever we look back. I think that is something the country has to be grateful for, and I am personally very grateful to President Bill for his support in the fight against corruption. I really enjoyed working with him. I always tell people that I'm the luckiest coach, and they say, why? Well, I said, well, I have a president who has my back and who believes in the fight against corruption. I think that is something we have to continue doing, and uh, I believe that he means what he says. They call him the talk and do, and I hope that uh, his promises in the fight against corruption will continue to be sustained. And as long as he's standing there, I can assure you, will continue to only succeed in the fight against corruption. Any updates on this uh, issue of the uh, maritime administration? Uh, maritime administration, the seven of them have been charged to call the trial has started in the High Court.
I think we can only now uh, pay attention to that trial to see what the outcome is. What do you want your legacy as commissioner to be? I think I want my legacy to be a legacy that really set the country on the path of accountability and progress forever. I want people to look back at the data, the statistics, at what we did at the ACC and know that there was once the commissioner here who really sent a message. I want them to look at the strategies that I'm using. Today, some people do not realize it. They may not even appreciate it. But I want them to look back and know that Begafala was here and this is what he left. I want us to continue. Already we have broken every record. Every record, whether it's prosecution, whether it's conviction, whether it's prevention, whether it's public education, whether it's indexes, local or international, whether it's surveys, wherever we have been, we are better than ever before. I want to continue raising the margin. I want to continue trailblazing in that direction, working with my very strong team at the ACC to continue to produce us of the country. So down the line, maybe when we are all old and greedy really over coffee, we can look back and say, Remember when we were having this conversation on bottom line and this is what we said we'll do? We believe that's what changed Sierra Leone. And that is my dream and hope for Sierra Leone. And so we prepare to go, Commissioner. I mean, indicting people, um, getting people um, evicted, as the case may be, I mean, within the, uh, the law. Do you have time personal for your personal life? How do you feel engaging or moving around? Do you feel comfortable? No, I, one of the thoughts of this work really, I have lost my personal life. I, I don't go out, I don't party at all, I don't hang out like young men do. And sometimes my friends, even those who travel from overseas, come. Is it for fear of your life? See me. No, it's not really fear of my life alone, although that is part of it. But I won't call it fear. Certain positions that you occupy come with responsibility. And uh, in my position, I cannot be everywhere. I cannot be interacting with everybody. I have to maintain that. Do you miss those chillings? Those, I mean, out in the I outside. miss everything that a young man can miss. I remember I, I tell people that this position has made me be old. But I, I enjoy doing it. As you saw, I was dancing with the people. I also tell that it's self-therapeutic. When I go on these journeys and I'm interacting with young people, older people, chiefs, and of course, even in Freetown, when we have these engagements, you see how much people appreciate what you're doing. I think that cures every other thing. But I can tell you that my personal life is really affected by it. Um, Do you I, sleep well? Well, it depends on the circumstances, but I try my best to sleep. Uh, I think that when it comes, I, 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 the work is going so well, and of course my conscience is so clear, I don't have anything I'm afraid of, that really it does not affect my sleep or anything like that. My conscience is one of the cleanest of that. But uh, of course the pressure of the work, sometimes I work until 2, 3 a.m. And that is why most people, they send me messages. Some people send me email at 1 a.m. and I respond immediately. And they are like, Kaivala, what is happening? Do you sleep at all? Or sometimes that is the time I respond to emails. That is the time I check my messages. That is the time I write my speeches. All the speeches, public lectures that you see that I do across the country in other places. All these presentations that I do. It is at night, usually after midnight, and I have time to sit down and put them together. And of course, it has a lot of toll on me. Um, it affects my time with my children. It affects my time with my family. And it also affects my personal time with other people. But one good thing is they all understand what I'm doing because what we are doing is very visible. Everybody knows what is happening with the fight against corruption. Everybody knows my engagement. Everybody knows where I am. They know when I'm in the provinces. They know when I'm in Freetown. And sometimes they say, yeah, we understand. We understand. Do you feel threatened? Do you receive messages of threat? I'm sure you hear them on social media. A lot of people threaten. They send audio messages. They go to my social media page. Some of them try to send messages through me, through other people. And uh, you get all people dreaming, very terrible things happening to you, and people praying for you all the time. It comes with its own pressure. But uh, I don't feel threatened at all. I think when I took up this job, I knew that it came with certain pressures from society and my mind is made up for it, I am not threatened at all. Is this a job that you enjoy or would you rather there was another job for you? No, for the time being, I believe that God put me here to do this for Sierra Leone. Is it my belief? It's a belief. And that belief is what fears what I do. So I really enjoy doing it. Trust me, I enjoy being commissioner. 
I enjoy doing my job. Uh, and for the time being, it's the only thing I want to do. Maybe after the five years, we can always look forward to other things. Your parting shots to the people of Sierra Leone as you uh, mark the return year in office and probably the, the next two years. Well, my message to the people of Sierra Leone is to continue to believe that better is possible. We are lucky to have a president who has given the free will for us to fight corruption and the results are self-evident. We all know people come from overseas, they say, trust me, things have changed. We know that there is still a lot to do, but it's not the same anymore. The way how it used to be free for all, people wanting to be, people not even afraid to be corrupt, now they know that there are consequences. All I want from the people of Sierra Leone is to stand behind the president and the ACC, and of course, generally, all the stakeholders in the fight against corruption, including those in the cluster that I have identified for us to fight against corruption. There can be no better time for us to put this country on a firm path for progress development. And it is now. And now that we have a leadership that is committed to this, let the people believe, let the people support. Don't allow yourselves to be distracted. We can change Sierra Leone, and we can only do this when we stand behind visionaries and people who are working towards ensuring it. And if we take away all our differences, regional, tribal, political, and believe in one nationalism, patriotism, Sierra Leone will be the best country to be. And I can assure you that is what we are working on and we'll realize it. Thank you very much, Leslie Video. That's how we end tonight's edition of Bottom Line. We've had the privilege of having Francis Ben Kaifala Esquire, Commissioner of the Anti-Corruption Commission, who has spent three years in office as Commissioner and will be analyzing, dissecting you know, his administration three years on. We are back next week with another edition of this program, Bottom Line. Many thanks to all of you, all Serenians, those who followed us here from broadcasting house on television, those who join us on our satellite, on radio, and even on Facebook. If you missed part of all of these editions, we are back next week with another edition. Probably we'll have time for a repeat broadcast of this, and we'll let you know. Many thanks, as usual, to the producer of this program, Tilly. One for tell Joseph thank you thank you for having the commissioner Francis Ben Kaifala three years in office. The first year, if you ask him, I don't think say he will talk the way I talk so now. The second year, if you go back, a different thing he been say. But I think as time evolve being the commissioner for anti-corruption a lot of things they happen and you go fenot say right now you get different tick as to certain things they would be don't ask and trade if you remember where them be ask him about perception not too long ago he say he not they deal with anything in a perception but now it will tell you, say, perception. Now, you didn't take kill Jesus Christ. <laughs> you see, because waiting the people and they perceive, now you didn't believe, and then they go by. He said, now that to make public education in the fight against corruption a very paramount to him. In the fight against corruption, it's a system. Nine are the major, major fights, not to the people. If you want to put them into percentage, it's a eighty percent in a system where you put in place. Twenty percent nine a scorpion squad. Eh? Twenty percent a scorpion squad. We can say twenty percent are people, but eighty percent are the system where you put in place. Nine the fight against corruption. He talk about in visits to the rural areas then. Now there he get for say where you go na the areas then they the thing the way we they talk about na freedom about corruption not to in the bother them people and they not to him the one them within other provinces within the rural areas 
The thin way they mourn at them, now either they land business, then bush business, and then thin and they. Eh? You say now they mourn at them. So some people they say, okay, why you left all who say then thin then they be in a free tongue? You say you they go for go enlighten the people them. Ah uh, well, if you see the clip of them play self, I think now the wrong one. Not so me think. Because it's all jubilant mood. Like how people can receive people in authority. Eh? Now all jubilant mood. But yes, we don't see few clips them inside the commissioner being the talk to the people them at the provinces. But inside don't tell we say that thing we we the talk about corruption. Eh? No to in them one then they the young corruption is different from the one way they make the entire country suffer there was a lot i hope you take pen and paper and you'll be write some jottings then down but make a begin come with we panelists then make we hear you put in then get for we today yes usman Tolly, you're welcome on board sir three years in office what in are you take sir okay um first well thank you and thank everybody we listening to this very very interesting interview from SLBS to the uh, anti-corruption commissioner we in uh, Francis Baker Kafala very very interesting and whenever it comes to the interview we involve corruption of the country we will see we we'll get a lot of mixed feelings and this mixed feelings you will get them um, from the comment section of uh, the pages them inside the interview that take place. A lot of people then raise concerns. Other people then they will then give positive comments. But it's about your perception of what you think, say, uh, you believe in what in the man they do. And uh, one interesting thing is say people then they look at uh, and they say it on the old. And indeed, I think say, it's a very big job. It comes with so much responsibility. And remember, he's only 37 years old. He said the time we take up the job, he was only 34. So now, now 37 years old. It's a lot of responsibility where it comes to uh, the fight against corruption of the country, uh, AAA. And um, when you listen to um, this man, he talk a lot about recognition, awards, the data, as you have not mentioned, you know, a lot of the things that we talk about is about in national as well as international recognition. And also we talk about the MCC scorecard. We all know say we been take over office. We've been there at 49%. Now we don't go to 81%. As I say no more, you know, to be honest with you, you know, do you serve justice? We you actually try for analyze this man in the fight against corruption. If you don't look at the pros and the cons, you must don't make some gains, in other words, as well as some setbacks, some shortcomings, I would say. So, it is important that when they talk about a, 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 a regime in terms of the fight against corruption, you get a look at it from the positive side as well as the negative side. We, we all will agree, say, there are some successes, no doubt about it. But also, you get a lot of pitfalls. We, I will just briefly summarize some of the things same we me face a, a success, no matter how you look at them. But also, there are a lot of areas then where a good number of the public, they say we get some serious concerns. But of course, undoubtedly, when we talk about some of the positive things that we all know, data sometimes is important. It they portray the country in, in a good way. When you talk of the uh, Transparency International, you know, we don't go 12 places up. 
that of course is clear from the report of, of the Transparency International. That is clear. We talk about the compact. Sierra Leone don't qualify for the four hundred million dollar. Of course, that that's na, na, na a success. We na under EU regime, under EU administration of the Anti-Corruption Commission, and they all until the day. So if they talk about them, I think say we will, we will agree with them. And one other big question we the ask them. They say what is the biggest accomplishment? Yeah, what is the biggest achievement? You know, you talk about the conviction rate. They say the conviction rate is over 95%. You know, and um, the thing is, uh, you talk about process systems and processes, triple uh, A, as you say. Um, to some extent, I will agree with them. But another way around, you know, we look at, um, we get a question mark, yeah? Because when you talk about processes and systems, it just we talk about the process system we uh, we for put in place for make sure say the fight against corruption become effective as as effective as possible. Yeah. But the thing about we own country, I think this is a general phenomenon. We can't we know say we don't get strong institutions in that country. Because when you talk about that cluster strategy way in they talk about we get forget strong institutions then. And you know, for which for long we get those strong institutions, you know, for for get the maximum result for the fight against corruption, I think in a T way it will take years for long we achieve. So uh, although you partly correct, although you partly correct, but uh, for getting eighty percent I think see, is a bit uh, problematic that that side in Asomi they look at that. Now, um, one other thing again, way I will say, I will congratulate them in terms of the positive actions. You see, um, for the previous uh, anti-corruption commissioners, then I think say then they concentrate on the aspect of the court going to court or convicting somebody. Uh, which I don't also agree. But the fact that in a try for diversify the fight against corruption into what he called the non conviction based asset recovery, where you go against the assets, I think is a good one because from that, it gives you a figure, it's about, I think, 10, 31 billion leons. Right? It will recover. The only thing I don't agree with them because Triple A, 31 billion loans is about $3.1 million. Technically, $3.1 million. Yeah? $3.1 million, he say if you go back to the last 18 years, it don't recover 50% of these stolen assets from the stolen uh, treasury from the country. You think, say, what in the don't thief now in country for the last 18 years is equivalent to 3.1 million dollars is far more than that i think it's far more than that so for say you don't recover 31 billion leons you know it's about 50 percent of footing the loans if now we come to 18 years uh, i think uh, uh, i don't agree with that uh, i think it's far more than that by my own estimate don't forget corruption and the cancer in our country. They make with the Usai with the soup today. Then let us count some of the concerns that we we'll get. I think one of the concerns we I get, we you don't also raise. I remember quite a while ago, the AXAM. They say when you did make new investigations, they not based on perception. That's something where we get on record. Yeah, he say you know they look to what in people and they perceive. You know, most of the time in they look at evidence base. Today so they ask them the same question. Yeah, he say he believe in perception. He say believe in perception. He say perception is a reality. Is the most perception is a, is a reality. Lakutan to be exact. 
Yeah. So in other words, is no uh, different times, different questions get different approach. So it's a little bit inconsistent there. It's a little bit inconsistent. So uh, I agree with you to so some extent. You know, it's like, you know, it answer the questions under duress because you have to be consistent. And this is a big job where all the nation they look forward to. Yeah? So that again, uh, one of the concerns they want to get. Then the other thing again we I get concerned with. Yeah? It looks like the fight against corruption is hierarchical. Hierarchical in the sense that, you know, some people them when they are at the top end of the spectrum, then they get preferential treatment. What do I mean by this? Are they given an instances of who say people and they were at the very, very top end of the spectrum, then they try for give them preferential treatment. Let me take the example of um, the first lady who recently concluded case of the first lady. Yeah, then they expose them to a very large extent, triple uh, A. The first lady, as everybody will expect, we all be no say, the first lady will not be convicted, no matter what. And the boss, the woman, and in both were appointed to this job, now you woman. So nobody know they expect say they will convict them. Because for me on conclusion, we know say you not thoroughly investigate this matter. To be honest with you, the matter has not been thoroughly investigated. I will give an instance why me if we say you know this matter has not been thoroughly investigated. Yeah? He quotes from the constitution section thirty nine. You know, that, um, you know, talk, 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 see, you know, certain sections of the Constitution, we get threshold for letting the Minister of Finance, you know, allocate finance resources to the first lady in office. And that gives the propensity for go back 14 years, for go investigate, you know, coming back to the first lady, for let blend the two together so that it will able to come up to a comfortable conclusion, so that we will come to a comfortable conclusion, yeah? That's a trick. Trust me, it's a trick. Because our own heart, yeah? Now, you listen to them. You say mismanagement, yeah? Where they give you money. They give you money for the project. Say, go run this project. Then when you go spend that money there, so you know they're not their own hand because they're not approved for spend their money. But the question is, uh, Triple A, the question is that money we then give for go spend a project. It's possible that that money we then give for go spend at that project day, it only spend, suppose you spend only 5% of that money day on that project day, the rest of the 95% of that money day, it go spend on otherwise. Now I make, now I make these institutions then. Then get for be strong, credible, and reliable. This is why in the investigation comes in. Anybody can come up with a project proposal, and say, look, I want to do this. Then you take money there. Then sometimes you go only use a small percentage of that money there. Then the rest of it, you convert them into your own private use. This is why in the detailed aspect of the investigation for don't kind side, and find out whether that money they were in gear, how many percentage. Whether you use the full percentage of that money they plan our project. Day. But as long as you not come to that conclusion, day, then you draw the conclusion day, say, as far as we're concerned, to this stage of the investigation, we will not see any criminal criminality, any criminal responsibility in this matter, going back to twenty years. I think it's flawed, totally flawed. Totally flawed. Yeah, whilst us, this is this is a comparison now, comparative analysis. If you go back to the investigation we didn't carry out to the MPs in the parliament, they ask the parliamentarians them for come with evidence. Would you make any come with evidence for see whether the money we didn't give them for go spend at the constituent system, whether they really put up thoroughly and for its intended use. This is why the 
the first lady should have investigated. It's possible that the money and the guy to go and do all and project and they, most of it is not being judiciously used. That is the, that is where I get a big concern with them. So to me, that investigation is not thorough. I have to I have to say this. Then also, um, the other area where I get concerned with where me get evidence where I get concerned with. Although I don't state in in, in, in positives then. The other area we all been on to talk about and um, triple A. We get for continuing for state these things and be honest to myself. The rice scandal gates. They have forty nine thousand bags of rice. He promised we he promised we say that case then get for open and back. We all know what may happen. They don't care go this case in a court, you know, where then say they know they mean force say get they get enough evidence for charge this mango court. Then charge and go court. Then later on, because they wanted, uh, 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 no, uh, they know they want they don't want jury trial. So therefore, they therefore withdraw the case. But they will try to organize the case again and send the case go court. That they don't know any nothing about that. And interestingly, all the people I wanted to interview this man, I don't know if they the follow up. They need the accent. Say, look, you been said to try this case. We involve the former minister of education. You go open and come back. We go. How far you don't go? We, we go. We we'll look for see somebody ask that question there. because that you know build up in credibility in terms of in terms of um, in, in, in position as uh, anti-corruption commissioner. Then again, another area where me are very much convinced that this case, this issue of EBK. Former president and by Kuroma. I feel say this case is close. Now me own thinking this. It's almost I don't think this man will be convicted. Because the interview was rather too short. It was rather too we the expect says most likely this man then go bring and come back for an interview because the entire interview was carried out under tense atmosphere. And remember, this man may be a former president of the state. There are a lot of questions to answer. A lot of people implicate EBK. So we would have expected that this man got a lot of questions. For we interview this man on that one and a half day, and then he said that we will likely go and come back no more after that. I doubt it. I'm making my own opinion here. You're free for, 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 for counter argue with me, but that is my own opinion here. Again, they ask about the African Express, Triple uh, A, the African Express. We all know say African Express, now we should do But most of these corruption cases, the, the roots for investigating them, we should blow out. Somebody, they come, they blow out the whistle. Yeah? When they blow out the whistle, then say, according to him, he say most of the claims them way African is the they make they say, a wasteful expenditure. Again, going back to what I've been telling you before, if you say, how will you know that this money will then give them people here to go spend on a given project or this procurement contract will then give them? It's possible that there is some form of corruption also involved in it. And you will only come to the bottom of that if you investigate thoroughly for see whether those funds will then give them they use them for their intended purpose. Are the funds efficacious? These are some of the fundamental questions then, where officials, you know, they are left unanswered. And they come for try for convince me, but for some, we not go accept. We not go accept. We not go accept. So, there is one thing I agree with um, Triple A before I stop my uh, before I, uh, I stop. Parliament get a rule for play. Parliament get a rule for play. The fight against corruption, to a certain extent, Parliament get a greater rule for play. In fact, the fight against corruption should be in the hands of the uh, the ACC Commission as well as Parliament. Some of NTI, especially uh, if you listen to the ACC Commissioner. It involves a prevention strategy. 
they say prevention is better than cure. Before you allow the thing for happen, you get for prevention. How will Parliament prevent some of them here or for, for happen in the first place? Parliament is not doing their job. We listen to some of the interviews and some of the with some of the high brain them at the country, sure as uh, KKY. Yeah? KKY. It makes them quite clear. It's one of the strong one of the strongest parliamentarians that we'll be talking about. In the sense that, you know, um then they, they get the people away know the ins and outs. They just the uh, they bo they they bold for come out for speak some of these issues. Now we get concerned with them. But they all in say parliament they hate and abate corruption. Indeed. Some of them see our parliament table then get so much so and get the power for call on any um ministry, any department, any agency for come summon in a parliament, you know, for come for Kangi account of the stewardship. The parliament is not doing much about that. Parliament only do about some of the like for example let me, let me give you an example. Like then the, the say uh a like conventional thing for le, the Minister of Finance, the Treasury, they give money to the first lady, not to tea, not just a conventional thing. Yeah? So they're not used for giving money for spend, you know. This is why in Parliament for can inside now. For can inside now, make sure say they put a law where you go guide the first lady them. If they don't want to let them give them money for anything, or if they give them money say, under what circumstance they for give them money. Those are the things they all expect Parliament for can now for begin, you know, deliberate on some of the issues here. But Parliament now in country they are weak. This uh, I also agree with the the uh, the anti corruption commissioner. Parliament then get a role for play along with that. So to conclude triple A, he gets some good points that we make. He's a young man trying his level best. Yeah. But also having said that, I think he's getting instructions from the above. He not will tell you. He not will tell you. But you know, he's doing his best. But I think say then the remote control him to some extent. And he get the fear, see. You see, when in the interview constantly refer to the boss, the boss, you know, he, he must get some sort of um influence where the president influence to some extent. What are you for what convince you you boss in wealth. It's not possible. We all really anticipate that. So that that clear evidence for sure you say indeed anti corruption commission, although we make progress, but there are a lot of pitfalls. I will stop here at Triple A, Lagi Charge, to my fellow panelists then. Uh, thank you very much and thanks to everybody who will be listening to the program. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Usman Tole. Yeah. Three years in office of Francis Ben Kaifala. Today, we will get the opportunity for me to listen and the latest interview where he gets for assessing safe, for see the fight against corruption, how far it don't go. Not anyone can go for them because. A lot of things then they will point finger up and parliament say not to anti corruption in work for changing their laws then they but a parliament in work. Now out us friend, make we waiting in get for we today. Welcome on board us friend, you get the platform, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, Triple for me the platform and thanks to all the listeners and viewers there. And thanks to Mr. Usman Tolly for your contribution. Um the three years were well, Mr. Ben Kaifala, they try for recognize when they call him for go interview him. Well, we see, say yes, actually, from more than take him at this job, as he say, he been getting enthusiasm, he can say, do some structure here and here. He try for implement one or two things then so that in job go able for, say, you they do your job. Because when you work, you get for work hard, so then go see this man, they work. Depending on the factor what you make back with and give the job. If not fever or on a back you get, whatever causes there now. But the job if you don't get them. But as you've been dimensioned, you don't say the three years them with them get for 
Um, you don't do every year when you come up or any time the three interviews they go see there is a change you gradually based on the experience what you don't they get it they say oh i don't go see this la come out la come out from this direction so you need deny about perception you see in the reality so you will get for look see i mean interview and job we don't do for the past three years if you look on on two bases if you look I'm on the objective and the subjective the objective way, because in season, the way that one day, if, 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 if they perform, they don't perform, what would they look at? That the way person, they judge something. In other words, when you see a book, you see them, say, you get hardcover, the column as a day. You know, we'll just say, na, 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 paper them, when you don't know, say, na, book. So that's not the objective of how corruption maybe in they look at it and how the people then they look at would they try for question now see if they do the work in that objective way when you see something so you know when you relate and shortly to the area where they say perception and reality you will see say you get back to your own at the subjective side so other person will come okay you go say rain deep and come and of course the rain they come but the other person will tell you say me i lack the rain I left the rain. So it is quite different. So if you look at the rain, the other person they say he left the rain. But he left to what in the person they argue now for say, well, what one the rain? Now because of this, I left the sound where they can't wait the sound the beat under the, the panels, if now under panels are there, or I left the breeze, all those kind of things. But in the objective of how in they look at corruption exactly. Because if you look at corruption as alone, if you've been in the look at from that perspective there. Where in, in they bring inside, but when they bring the points there, they bring them in that subjective way. You know, I was in the type of say, Well, if it say, let them, let them spend money on this, or, or 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 let the judge them do this, let, let this happen, let this happen. So, you will get for questions say, Some of these things should have been on the onset of the job when in jail, other than waiting in the do not acquire it, they acquire knowledge. The only way they acquire now, if they if, 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 if will pass after five years to somebody else or the teacher. So at the end of it, at the time that one day, he will able for no say, oh, I don't can get experience based on my knowledge you I get from law. So I don't can look how civil work they go on and how in terms of criminal issues and they go and how the law and the judicial and how government and how institutions and they work, how the system they work and how you get for go inside the system. But again, you look at say you, you, you are saying it so that we will learn for saying as we will do. But you go ask a question, say, if they put these things are in place, are you going to lead people who then go able for convict for given those years? That's not the question. Or because are you get for prosecute them? Because this is a special body here. Will they go prosecute somebody? But it's not a, not, not a, um, um, different, na, 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 na something from let's say the, the na some people na some people na civil something where na the other sector where na crime we don't commit na the na the committee police and hold you this and hold you but in na inga for possible in go able for put evidence together for let that case they come you go question those things so you go try to say yes it is suggest something it is bring up an idea but na that objective and subjective way they go for put apart. So we will foresee waiting actually now the corruption we don't cause, which are the institution they don't cause, which is the subject then they, but you go look at from different categories. Then. You go not say, first of all, the main thing that people in passionate feeling and the way they taste something, the way where they taste or how this they they, 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 are they are they get out of this when i get money i go able for do them that test they, they lead me to corruption then the personal feeling what i get and then the behavior what you get and when you categorize them all into something you get up to that eight to nine but the main signs of the court way in for look into if it is structure first of all he identify them but indirectly he never talk about the size and the structure of a government and when the size and the structure of a government is big or is small, it reflects on how the economy they go. It reflects on how we are able to look into institutions then. 
If we, the number of una, 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 the, 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 the size of the, the government, you know, they reflect on the population and the people they will get to go away for work. Because right now, then they say they get 96 people there, then get this. But you therefore ask, it, as some of them, they are in a learning course, as ongoing, they get experience. But you will ask the question, see, are they capable of going for let them go able for prosecute this? So at the size of that government, they will be, then get ministry now, inside the president, then get back the first lady's office, then get some time. Yeah, we lost friend. Okay, we don't get you back, sir. Yeah, yeah. Get me back. Okay, the network for me. I don't know what's happening. So that's the problem. You see, the size and the structure of the government is so big. Even the case where they're so, it spent time planning case there around camp. You get for go check the chief minister, you because uh, they then they give perception. You get for check this. You get for check the first lady. The this person, apart from the one the way that actual people have like, got president for day, you forget vice, you forget ministers. But that now the area where government get for look into the size and the structure of the government, and they bring we now to the democracy and the political system within the country. These are all factors where they lead to corruption. The first one, the size is so big, just like where you get a big crowd. Well, they will maintain them, except you become vigilant. Well, they will deal with them, except they are like a hard some people and they say that cow, they will deal with them. Well, in other words, there is a bigger size, it's difficult for, 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 for like control. You can forget, get another bigger size, well, well, um, or well, well, well structured, for look after that, and you know, for I know, we will see through because that one day they hide the other person, they and they hide the other person, they will just put her in that objective way. They will say, Now, that one day, so, because they know they see the government is big, so because of that democracy and the political system, you will find out, say, that it bring up the size of the government for big, and then you will look at the quality of the institutions and what he mentioned. Then quality of the institution. Some of the institutions they go sign for say, are they meant to have been blended? Somebody, some people like this will say, oh, we can't touch them, we'll say, oh, na so say, but the idea say, some people like say, well, there was a social among um, children and other things, them, when I bought this, them, um, we've been the help in terms of um, uh, children, or would they help in terms of this, lost them beyond day in terms of this, why would not we just structure that one day, that if me can, uh, can't just support them for campaign, we'll not go before. So you make it a unit. I'm not saying that should be, but I'm just saying these are all the factors, the quality of the institutions. Eh? The quality of the institution, is it equality? Wouldn't they, wouldn't they suck out from the social welfare? So the social welfare are not go able to see or, or children and gender. So the other side and go diverse. So this type of things, you go question and say the quality of vision are then here and then get for look into who will reduce the, 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 the corruption or in the type of the institution. Then you look about the economic freedom. You look about is there economic freedom? Where are the people and they pay them the right way? Or the, 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 the money where you get, are they able for balance of what they do? You will see sometimes some people that are tempted because then they secure themselves, say, this is the only way I will survive. Then the openness of that economy, they will say, oh, they go tap. Is the economy open for them to go, go tap day? Or it close to just a few people them, or you get for spend more, we go, you know, we'll get something one. The openness and the freedom we'll get for expect. All them things there, now then they build up the structure where it be safe in the suggest, these are the suggestions we then get for bring. They are not saying it's difficult, but the other ones, in terms of that salary, the right economy, I think the salary of civil services them back, we then get for looking to emission and back. But again, you, you you will try for look, say, these are all things we don't need. But again, if you look at the level of corruption, is it a, 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 a equal to what some people want to hire the people the way they up, then they take up? Because who says on just a man when that police go gather, gather, so they say more done in 50,000 50, a week, say gather, gather, and say more done, you get this. So they you now one grain to travel wouldn't they give you per DM, they don't give you 3,000. For travel, because that is something we didn't see now lawful. So they give back all that thing. So you go time for this, say, well, now, if I go take now, I go take, I decide for take millions, because I, they don't give me 3,000 US dollars. The 3,000, if you don't do for me, if I say I want to corrupt that, I get for take millions. So these are the areas where you get for CC, that area of that civil service, the salary. 
they gave for look into them and look how they go able to say to them the civil workers and how they go able for manage them so that you go able to reflect the balance and will spread them out to people who get forget them and then the other one and put them into economic development. The turnout to the press freedom and the judiciary. The God, those are the areas where it be say now then at the last backbone who will break you because you get the media where they talk about you and that you get about this. They don't pull the libel law. But now they will try for a, a cyber law. Or now go try for talk say the cyber law will stop media because it's protecting in some way people. Learn. But the idea that I say the press freedom, who side the freedom of the press will get for day, where they don't go question them. Where they then go able for question, who rather than get for question. Like who then they go ask to a day and meeting say. Minister and one lawyer. So the the from or the judiciary judiciary go able to them. They have they have to be strong. They have to be then get for know about get for know that people for say you will not do this for example. But the act is not being identified. Stage. Even the yeah, we don't know this government. You know, side talk activists. So you be don't you be they talk about them. For can now this drama put at table. Then this country now so who more they go say short term loan and not go do this that money and restructure now. If you we talk about me and the culture and give, so the culture one day I pick up. Now try forget um Usfen back because the line the break break. Let us see if we will get them back Clara. So that he will continue. Yes, you believe yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, okay. But I believe right, okay. Answer. Yes, sir. I do now. Okay, yes, sir. thank you very much. Yeah, so that, that's what the tribe will talk about. Uh, that cultural determinants, what the people and the tribe forget, that behavior day. In the tribe will talk about for letting them go spend more money in that one day for the structure instead of them go spend money on things them we go 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 pushing the system so that they go stop for doing it. but some of these things don't need spending they just need to be taken out because what let them pass a bill for city and a parliament you know they cost money you know cost money for some of the other things then so they have to use resources then when a home-based resources instead of when they try for lean in the way and go say let we depend on people and go come then can show with something we add from there, or let we try for let we we'll get more so we we'll go able for can use we will not go get our income day. So if you have a question, say now cultural things and we'll get things that we'll go able to use. The, the, the people and get for understand we can structure certain areas them. We know say the, the system, say like the system of the hospital. It's simple now for say let them go get for structure them. The way they will get for spend for some of the one them, then they will say they will spend for some of the other areas then, then get for just structure. The one them where they do the feeding, the dependent, and that de then dependent from, then dependent, I mean, how do they feed the dependent? The way they feed the dependent, it get for be fair. That means if they say, take this, go this boss, or take this medicine, go get this, or you go sign this money up for all can do this project. The people that will get the prayer, that depend on, they will depend on that one day. Now, then you get for equate for sushi. That, that one day, where they give them, they get for the in place. But some areas, you don't need to spend to restructure that system. You just have to apply certain ideas and strategies them. So, if they try for um, comment, say the total system need money for let them go restructure them, let them not spend money for short term development. Where would they know say short term development not good now? Long term development, but again, if something they do, would then go do sub sub what is what are substantial something what are infrastructure for long time, let them spend panam and then then they restructure that in the you can hospital, the medicine will come, then they then they know say an amount of drugs, then they disperse them. It's simple. 
Nothing more than they put an input. You just say inside the computer, they don't put Mr. Joseph, they don't disperse this medicine to them. Look, the receipt, they put them. They know that such amount of drugs, they don't come, then they input them. For do a kind of check on them one, and it's simple. All you need for go now, the stock, you check how much they don't give, whether they don't come at the hospital. Those are the system we see in place. But why are you going to forget now when you put something in data? The kind they talk about data system, what they have for brings, instead of you will not develop popular one will go pay for big data, who will not get for who employ them, who will not try for put that data system. We are in the patient and data system a day, a day in a kind of a pothole. You go to my work, post you don't take treatment, you get that identification number, like RN, um, that NI number the day, with the um, NRM, and then the registration, they do so. So those kind of things, those numbers identifying you, you they get and they, on the top of your date of birth, you they show. Because they know, say, you don't get this treatment, you don't get this type of diagnosis, this, this, this blood test. You know, what? there is an inventory of data we get for day. So they're not there for become slow partner. Then they try to get a portal to they will and say this portal and a portal will have for a procurement. Procurement, all the industry the ministries and get for the input. But that one day back, I don't know how effective it is. They say now they have the input for letting them go do what they need for the world and go know say I'll procure something and once then go buy them. So I think when they can now, then go just go now in presence in case they want all the for just see in evidence of what they did. So these are all the structures. What made they suggest, say, if they look at structures, this is how they go restructure. But for say, let them restructure them all in a way when they say all, so that they go put things in place. And there are things in place, the things then just need to be moved in the right place, and some of them need to be moved out, and the areas then where they need actually for spend, now little areas then where they will go spend. In terms of something a technology or something when I want to go into that and the board, this is not a cyber thing. This is something to do with evidence when I get for go get. So when I get right for go get the system, when I plenty, you know, some things on what they do now, now the internet we try for hide from when I, when I get for go spend more and more. All the ideologies there, when I try for bring them and apply them so that when I will get a rule in the pool and fix the effects, we will make instrumental development we get for day before. And I want to you know, I just want to say, let God help them, so that let God make himself understand. We know they say what in they do, you know, you know better, but with those the questions, and some of the things they are, we say, is it perceiving them in the right way, and the objective way, or the subjective way? Is he chasing them because of it, they bring idea, or he go chase the, 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 the former first lady, so that he be don't know, say, if I catch this, I know, I know, okay, this. so because of that one day, the uniform, make I just make a strategy. So that strategy they go make. Some people then go question those things. But say, well, that one day I no say it at the same thing you do. That like just good because if I bring them up, we now we know what we talk up and uh, we will set remote and then we will come back. We show them like this. Thank you very much for me the platform. Let God continue for help you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Us friend. Yeah, most welcome. Yes, yeah, most sir. welcome. Yeah. Well, that's now uh, Us friend in your submission for today. You ready to listen? You get the opportunity now. If you want your voice to be heard on this particular topic, we really talk about three years in office of Francis Ben Kaifala. Um, it don't make him open to it today with all the ones the way he say people and the question I'm about. Not to get for change, I'm, but it depends. If we want to make a change, make we go parliament because now parliament and then they make the changes. 232-789-0991. That now WhatsApp two three two seven eight nine nine zero nine nine one. But if you want for call direct, you can call United States or United Kingdom. United States are one six four six six one zero three one zero seven. United Kingdom now four four seven three nine eight zero three zero four zero two. We don't spend a lot of time now. Yeah? We don't go over two hours already. So um, if we feel say we panelists then don't hit the nail, then I guess. We go left arm for another time, but so don't begin getting calls then. Yes, call ID live on here. You name me the call from, please. Ah, uh, triple A. It's now Mustafa, the call from France. Yes, Mustafa, you get three minutes. Uh, what is your contribution? My contribution is, uh, let God help on our first for this good work we do. And, uh, let God guide me. Let God push you country go before. Let God give you the right people and for who we country. Because in in every territory they see, 
is so political. And anything when you they fight, you not journey with and you they use that political fight, a bad. Everybody can say what they want for say, but when Kefala when he come into power, when he come for run after the opposition, maybe they do very, very well. The disgrace come no more now, follow a disgrace himself for show with the Sierra Leoneans and say now be political fight if they fight. When it come for say look in wars now, now they mess up everything. All the big big people them when the name fall into corruption, accusation anyway because they not prove beyond all reasonable doubt. But him instead of he, he calm and do proper investigation, he only did a defense. Now him be the defender now. Now they don't disgrace himself. Now we they talk about perception, but rather when people let me they when them perceive say anti-corruption they do well. Oh, if you see I they go and jump jump all side. We don't try. We see people and don't even the perceive say they do very well. Now when people and don't go, they don't see the reality. They don't they talk and now they say that they talk about perception. That's now how waiting really really they affect we country salon. Because we're not sincere into everything we told they do. We only they look now the political the political eyes now they look with in very bad. And for one low country you low country go before, first general fight. So God go able help we. But one thing I get for saying at this platform, God will do up the series. If anybody will the for do the right thing, God go guide them. But if it affects for deceiving the political way, let God pass judgment on them very fast. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much, Mustafa. Yeah. Yes, call ID live on here. Your name is Nusari Kofan, please. Yeah, this is Patrick. Yes, Patrick, you get three minutes, sir. What do you get for it today? Uh, the commission, I don't answer the whole question. Whoa, whoa. For especially, they say monkey one boxing a shot. Then I, I would get a big deep meaning. Then number two, you know, they say the main thing that the system, and I, I believe I want agree with her on that side, you know, because when you set up the system where corruption did take place in government, before you go to the common man and the system and the read. Before physical people that now they begin to handle the money or whatever, you know. But if that system don't corrupt, things are not going to be work fine, you know. So you make a point, you get a point, which I agree with that. So something in day, as you said, we know say one of the main system where for change, where for work when in the parliament, then I know the main system, then at the root. Because what we did today, today, if we argue about, or we talk about money they give to first lady and all that thing, and they, because the system, when at the parliament, don't allow her, you know. Because we know, say, in all over the world, president, wife, and a wife, they, they don't, they get with this, now they with the husband, they get money for the live on. But we own country, we don't know. So the system, and they don't say everything when are the main thing and that the system and it's something and the way you want to do you're not going to be able to do it because you're short you're short you're not going to be able to do it and you know when you're short whether they remote you not to all see they do as one of the panel they say not to all see they do because you don't under why eyes and you're not able to say some things and you're not able to do something there. You know, they're just, they're just doing best as a human. You know, when uh, somebody, they say the whole year, you know, that man, all the grow, you know, see why they see in Belay, they come now, they don't enjoy, which is not that a part of life, now human growth than it. But the system, when I the main thing we talk about, and don't pull the parliament. So if things that change in our country, they for towards corruption, 
the parliament got a great role, the great, great role, you know, for handling some of the systems in there, in trip offline, which is good. Yeah, most of the people that are offline, they're not much concerned with government business, although they're supposed to because it impacts their life, because on development, they were government or parliament, they passed for offline, the provinces, not through the chief there or the head man there or they go to but corruption, they play not a line there, so they're not the getter. I make them more concerned on the farming or bush or land, you know. But I know me so happy, you know, so video or say you know me to them people a silent jubilation no more in But as you say that in a sidetrack, it defend her, which is not bad. But you don't say the main thing when me agree with. The system and thing that we want to do in short. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick. Yes, colleague eleven here. You need me to say the call from please. Yeah, I'm in from Morocco. I'm the call from Netherlands. Yes, from Morocco. Get three minutes. What is your contribution? Like my contribution to start with was like the observation we may see now the fight of corruption now salo like anybody who gets that office they know the fight against the previous administration except the past administration because if you think about francis ben kaifa the tell we in start we in just get disappointments from the president we see what he in do um everybody with the guy praise a guy scoring mark this is just the normal like with somebody they sit external exam now. Then say you compose the subject. Now you feel so. So like if Francis Benka fall along the York, so we don't really don't see corruption or they don't legalize our salon. And we don't know see for any government with really in power, the possibility they get that office day. They def- not get anything for doing that present government day. Except the past one, so like now so corruption do happen now in the country. So like me, if me the grid been kafala, in square and mark all we in gets just like we see to us, you know, get math, you know, get English language. I go to university. That's when that happens so to us. Because like this, now everybody in the idea. It's in the way the perceptions to the we make in the team up in the Eastern or in this talk. Everybody they talk good about her. See, they nah, don't condemn that this so that don't tell we see that same perception so easy. Now lie they like her, the quality we they and they not deserve her. So you don't say we done it plainly. So like corruption at you don't legal on a salon. That's my contribution. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you very much for moral. <laughs> Yes, Colleague 11, yeah, you name inside the coffin, please. Okay, I guess we lost that call already. Make we try them again. Very call direct. No call. Who? First, you know, call direct and it's a low number. You've been warned. Let's see. Now I'm getting call now. And the line don't close. Oh no, this. Okay, I'll try over here. Three years in office. Okay, let's see again. All right. Yes, call ID live on your name and the call from please. Who are you far off? Yes, Mike, you get three minutes, sir. Uh, what can I explain to we? I mean, what 
see again from now, or put at the investigation, or put at the evidence. I don't explain to you anything. What do you you find out from the 14 years we go back? And from this three years investigation, we investigate the first lady. Yeah, all I need to explain to you, what do you find out? If we don't know what you find out, how you fight corruption? Like I don't say now before, this corruption, everything is fake about it. Corruption is fake. If, 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 if they investigate, you know, can can tell you what you find out. That means you know they investigate anything. I mean, but wait you know, we know the process we go you, through. You see the press release yeah. with anti-corruption pool? Because they don't pull press release so. Well, for the first lady? Yes, sir. But they say they say they not find out anything though, right? Yeah, they, no, they find out uh, now so it be done they happened twenty years ago. Twenty years ago. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh god, what uh, out of that inside that twenty years they how much money lost? Then say we how much money lost? Well if you check the press release now billions of leons, they not say lost so now and then use. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh god, this guy is this guy. They, they, they keep facing no more salon money. Not, not for them, they put her for, for let them use her spend her, you know. When they put you for fight corruption, fight the corruption fairly. Fight the corruption. The corruption is there for so the people, the poor people in the country will benefit. Not for not for the, the big, big one and for letting go the thief the money they go, you know. But well, I didn't put you under for let's fight the corruption. So the poor people and this the layman then at the country will benefit from this from this thief there or this thief man they are when they in charge, you know. But well, you know they do it, you know they will do it because the day he tried to fight corruption the, the genuine way, and that day they, they lose they lost in jail. You know that you no know? uh, man this this not just not just game that they play no one, any contribution on this. Thank you very much, Mike. All right, um, that's our last caller for today. We talk about three years in office of Francis Ben Kaifala. And today, don't make a known to we say certain things than the way we expect them for do. That's not the commissioner's job. That not to anti corruption then job. For change laws na country, na the parliament, na in the change laws. So instead of we they come after them, they will go to parliament. They'll tell parliament, say, okay. In aspect of the first lady receiving money, let we go tell the parliament, say, we oh, don't want to let the first lady in office. They get hella hella money. If he travel with him, man, self, instead self, he get per diem. That's what he say. And if you watch him, I, I know people and the way they blame him say, okay, if this thing don't happen 20 years ago, if he been wrong, then correct her now. Now make it say, not to the correct her. Eh? Such things then the way people and always they tell him say, if they go after the small things, you know, they go after the big things. They tell and say, you left Fritong, you go to the provinces. Instead of don't talk and say, where you going to the provinces? The thing that all they discuss in Fritong, not to end, then they discuss they. But for sale, for turn a blind eyes to the one them way, then at the provinces, waiting, um, then feel seen a corruption, where they happen at the community. No. But again, the big things, where they drain the country, is in Freetown. Yes, Freetown to Saloon. We should not centralize everything in Freetown, but my dear, now say they be. Eh? My three years in office, so, like I said earlier, would he be talk before? What will he talk now? So, as them they go, we either learn another job, we they experience more another job, uh, they get we. For explain to we more. Let me tell you, ask for nobody hate him, but let will just listen to what he say. And if our constitution, our right, we constitution, our right. Eh? Let will do something about this constitution. 
tomorrow we go try for get um Edmond Abu because it look like say Usa would all reach by this fear business. Hey, fear get for go up. I they see fake um press releases then around. They say fear long come up from eight thousand five hundred to ten thousand. That is not true. I make a call. We still we say get yourself a trusted source of information so that when they say thing happen, you do go day, you go cross check if not true. If you know the day, you know say not to true. But to, to everything you see now, WhatsApp, you see now, Facebook, you see now, get yourself a trusted form of information. As we getting closer to election, the propaganda machine from them with two party they are, eh? It it map better better strong strong one. Now, the kind of way we, we people and they play with press releases, then, even for the real ones, if they confuse you now. If you don't know how to go cross check, you could just see all kind of press release. People they not take and make anything again. Just for troll with the minds of Sierra Leoneans. As we get in closer to election, eh? The different camps then ready for confuse we. They're not there to convince us to vote for them. No, then they put we in a confused state so that at the end of the day we're not even waiting for do. So get yourself a trusted f- source of information because look lately no more. You go, you go bear with me saying that's good. All kind of a fake press release. Then they come on now. Then pull say, then pull say, um, the president say for give two months light because um um, waiting Leon Star win. All those are fake. You get people away they share as they see so now for share. I don't know so I can go take on money or I don't know if now by week then the people now for the share fake things or now by month. I hope say that the people now. Ah, and so for me to the last election, the propaganda machine, then all the camp, then be the work better, better. One. They are not there to promote what in the one for can do for we, they are not there for make we understand what in the really, really, really eh, get planned for we now for just propagate lies, like I said, for confuse we. And with this day and age of social media, you gotta be careful which they absorb. But anyway, Edmond Abu say, if fuel price go up, then they come on a street for demonstrate. But they try forget them tomorrow. Eh? Because alone police then they talk the only end. You know, say before you go on a street for demonstrate, you get for giving twenty one days notice. Then when I get for sit on talk. We, we, I get a talk with the media team, um, the media person, the Sierra Leone police. I will try to upload that the interview day. Eh? Because I think, see, they have a part to play too. And uh, even we as citizens, them, this is not just what I feel. I think, see, we have get part for play. Because if we able to get our one side, we all will placard, we do and day, we part company day, the police able for mediate for car with the person what we need for the most even even like the president they got Dandy. Well, I left her. Well, upload the the interview with the uh, police. You go see. You know, say now nah, be the turn and say I need for ask them. Ask them. Say we then can go training. What in they tell the police day? Eh, against camera. What did they tell them? Because I don't know. The alarm police their camera shy. <laughs> I don't live on you. We'll get here back tomorrow. But to me, one thing I know, fuel price they go up in a salon. And I don't know how the native consortium get for absorb that because fuel price get for go up. And they don't say if you go up, then they come on a street for the most street. Because they say enough for go up if you left a day. When I return, and Sabi for tell we say that the sub region. The fuel price now so he did it. But at the same sub region, they go buy granite and paper for cancel now country. Then he tell say, well, the paper and granite price now so he did it. Low self put and down. 
but because he did up they didn't say look put her up so that he go match them one in the they will not live there yeah? any stress Mm-mm. not give me them confused you know social media yeah get yourself a trusted source of information we'll get there back tomorrow till we meet again triple a say ta-ta